Now Allah Azza wa Jalla says, where will you get the strength to maintain that iman? If you do get that fervor and that iman, is it possible that somebody comes out into the light and pulls back into the darkness? Sure, happens all the time. Like we said, good days and bad days. What does Allah say in the next ayah? هُوَ الَّذِي يُنَزِّلُ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ He is the one who sends down over and over again, continually upon his slave, miraculous, clear, self-evident you know, signs. لِيُخْرِجَكُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ Revelations if you will. So he can pull you out from the shades of darkness, إِلَى nur to the light. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِكُمْ لَرَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ And Allah, especially in your case, بِكُمْ خَاصَّةً يعني مقدم. لا إن الله لا رؤوف الرحيم بكم بكم مقدم the jar majrul muqaddam the mutaalliq bil khabar muqaddam especially in your case Allah is extremely compassionate rauf in the human sense rafa in the human sense is to be able to feel somebody's pain to identify with somebody's situation you're trying to tell somebody about your problems and they're like I, I don't think he gets what I'm going through you can't understand what I'm feeling right now that's you know lack of rafa Ra'uf, Allah calls himself Ra'uf, and by saying that, he's saying not only is he merciful towards you, kind towards you, he knows exactly what you and I are going through. He identifies with your and my state entirely. In your case particularly, Allah is Ra'uf, and always ready to take care of you, and shower His blessings and mercy upon you. وَمَعَلَكُمْ And what's wrong with you? Allah تُنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ That you wouldn't spend in the path of Allah. وَلِلَّهِ مِيرَاثُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ have you forgotten that Allah alone owns the inheritance of the skies and the earth? What are you going to hold on to those few dollars? That little bit of time? That little bit of youth? Don't you realize even you are property and I own you and the earth you came from? You're just going to be, you're going to go back into the ground. And what's going to happen to that nice car that you were saving up for instead of you know, serving my deen? This is a very real conversation. I don't want to talk to you about Sahaba today because we can. These ayat, the sahaba were listening to them. I want to talk to you about me and you. You know, there, there are people who were very, very, you know, when they became, I, I know a person I was talking to recently, he became, when he became Muslim, he was extremely, extremely active. Like he just wanted to do stuff for Allah. You know, he just wanted to serve Allah, however he can. And one time he got into an accident, he thought he was going to die, and the only thoughts running in his mind were, have I done enough? That I earn Jannah or not? He wasn't thinking about his wife. He wasn't thinking, he, and the thought of the wife came, the kids came, he goes, I didn't take care of them, Allah did, Allah will take care of them. I'm, I'm gonna come and go. Their risk is not on me, their risk is on Allah Azza wa Jal. That was his mentality. But he survived the accident. And he, you know, left that company, and he graduated, and he, you know, got a job, and got another contract, and then another contract, and this and that, and career, career, career. And he told me like, for the last eight, nine years, all I've been thinking about is savings, investment, the next move, the promotion, saving for the kids, paying off the house, real estate, 401k. And yeah, I go for salat and stuff, but my day and night is not spent thinking, how am I going to get to Jannah? It's not, it hasn't been like that. That's, I, I remember being like that once. I remember that time. I'm not that person anymore. I don't know what's happened. I'm questioning why am I, am I just on this earth to just save more money and build more of a career? Why, why am I on this earth? I'm just starting to question, rethink about where my life is headed.